"'Twas the night before Christmas, when all through the house, "'not a creature was stirring, not even a mouse. "'The stockings were hung by the chimney with care, "'in hopes that St. Nicholas soon would be there. "'The children were nestled all snug in their beds, "'while visions of sugar plums danced in their heads. And Mama, in her kerchief, and I, in my cap, had just settled our brains for a long winter's nap. When out on the lawn there arose such a clatter, I sprang from my bed to see what was the matter.
Away to the window I flew like a flash, tore open the shutters and threw up the sash. The moon on the breast of the new fallen snow gave a luster of midday to objects below. When what to my wondering eyes did appear, but a miniature sleigh and eight tiny reindeer. With a little old driver so lively and quick, I knew in a moment he must be Saint Nick. More rapid than eagles his courser they came. He whistled and shouted and called them by name. Now Dasher, now Dancer, now Prancer and Vixen, on Comet, on Cupid, on Donner and Blitzen. To the top of the porch, to the top of the wall. Now dash away, dash away, dash away all. <laughs> Thank you.
As leaves up before the wild hurricane fly, when they meet with an obstacle mount to the sky. So up to the housetop the courses they flew, with the sleigh full of toys, and St. Nicholas too. And then in a twinkling I heard on the roof, the prancing and pawing of each little hoof.
Sorry I'm late. Tessa's bag broke, so I had to pull all of her supplies in a grocery bag. Trinity was starting to fit because she didn't want to wake up, as usual, and traffic was extremely bad around their daycare. You're a whole 16 minutes late. That's the third time this week. I know, but I'm... Then why is this still happening? How about you do something right for once and go into the mailroom? There's still some junk left over from last week. On it. I cannot believe this girl gave us a two-star review for our new eyeshadow palette. What's it say? The colors are extremely dulled, making it necessary to apply multiple coats. Not to mention applying said palette is irritative to the skin. Well, that's her fault for having alligator skin. Some people. God. Good morning, Aunt Lizzie. Look. I'm not one of your friends, okay? You call me Elizabeth. Now what do you want? Just wanted to stop by and ask if you're doing anything tomorrow evening. Paying bills? Well, I'm having a Christmas get-together with some friends, and I was wondering if maybe you'd want to join us. I'm not going. Besides, I'm working anyway. Working? It's Christmas, a time for family, friends, and giving. Are you absolutely 100% sure you can't take it off? Yes, I am positive. I can't take a day off. Bills don't pay themselves. Are you done asking stupid questions? I guess. Okay, see you later. Maybe not. Don't let the door hit you on your way out. Come on, Aunt Elizabeth. Surely you aren't serious. Look, when you grow up to be a real adult, you'll understand business. Someone has to be here to run the shop. Well, actually... No, absolutely not. Well, fine. My door is always open. Like always. Merry Christmas. Goodbye. And a Happy New Year. Goodbye. Adios. Ciao. Go away. Happy holidays to you too, Betty. You too. What a lovely young lady. And an annoying pest. Um, ma'am? What is it, Cratchit? Well, she was just asking you to join her. She was, wasn't being a pest. But that's not what I wanted to talk about. Then stop wasting my time and get on with it. Okay, sorry ma'am. Um, would it be okay if I took tomorrow off? Fine. But to make this fair, I'll have to deduct your pay. Would you look at that? What? It's a letter from Marley. <laughs> Can you believe she can't even rest in peace without bothering you by letters? Don't touch that. What's the harm? I think, I just think if someone, you know, dies, maybe they should. You are talking about things you don't understand. I'm so sorry. Miss Marley died back in June. I didn't know it was still a touchy subject. You finished sorting out our mail? Mm -hmm. Good. Our latest shipment of supplies should have arrived at the post office last night. Get it. Yes, ma'am. Hey, I know I can never understand the bond you two had, but it's better to look forward and stop looking back. Maybe you should try and find people you truly care about. I mean, after all, that's the point of Christmas. Christmas. Bah humbug. To Elizabeth Scrooge from Jane Marley. What? Jane wrote me a letter? How could this be? She's been dead for months. Dear Eliza, read this letter carefully. When I died, my sin carried with me into the afterlife. The guilt pains me every second. Uh, wait, what? How? She wrote this after her death? You have been alive longer than I have. You've done far worse things than me. Tonight you will be haunted by three spirits of Christmas past, present, and future. What? Who's haunting me? They're, They're doing, doing this. this for your own good. Please listen to them and understand what they are saying. Otherwise, you'll end up like me, infinitely suffering. This is the only warning you will receive. Goodbye, Goodbye forever, forever, Jane. Jane. Okay, I'm just overworking myself. Breathe, Elizabeth. Breathe. Ooh, 
Hey, Lizzie. Ah, what? What? Oh, maybe I should have been a bit more polite. <laughs> anyway, um, I'm the ghost of Christmas past. Yeah, sure. Who are you really? Someone wanted punk who has nothing better to do? A punk. <laughs> You're funny. So, like, I'm here to help you reflect on your past. The past is in the past. I have no reason to look behind me and see all the garbage I've had to deal with over the years. Come on, it'll be fun. I promise. No, just leave. <sighs> okay. Can I show you a magic trick first? If it makes you magically disappear, by all means, do it. Ta-da! Does this look familiar to you? Does what look familiar? You took me to my old high school. Revolting. What's the point of being here? I'm showing you where all this hatred came from. Duh. That's why we traveled back several decades. I don't believe it. Is that... me? Goth was not a good look on me. I look like a human sharpie. Contrast apparently wasn't a thing in my eyes. I think you look fine. Yeah, of course you do. Here! Do the colors show up well? How much again? Ten bucks. Oh, I don't really know. I mean, if you can't afford it, I'm sure someone else will. No, no, I need this, or Tom will ever love me. He will love me. Pleasure doing business with you. <laughs> I must say, I'm surprised. Seeing where my passion started, it's unusual. The only thing my horrible mother would get me were those cheap lip gloss containers. Can you believe that? Ungrateful for your daughter being gifted? Makeup isn't a phase. It's an art form, darling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whatever. Just watch. No way. That's Marley. Hey, Marley. You know, you're kind of late. Yeah. Sorry. Here. You wanted these, right? I sure did. Nice. You know the Lamont twins, right? Lex and Lucy? Yep. Just sold them a unit. That makes 20 this week. Really? Finally making something out of this boring old school. Ha! Huh. And we did. It's unusual to see where my start to success came from, but I couldn't be happier. But you knew the ingredients in the products weren't safe to use on human skin. The poison in them. Well, it filled my pockets, so that's what matters, no? No... You're missing the point. Uh, here. Let's try this. Well, I don't care if it's not in the best condition. Sell it! You! Honey, you haven't seen your family in months. A phone call every now and then would be nice. What are you fishing for? Well, can't I just come see my daughter and say hello? Nobody ever talks to me unless they need something. It's probably money, isn't it? What are you talking about? Honey, we love you, money or not. Right. Dad kicked me out of the house and you sat there and watched because you love me? You let him remove me from the picture. But of course, you only come to me when I find success in what I do. I'm sorry, okay? I didn't say anything because I was afraid your dad and I would split. And I couldn't do that to your sister. You know what? Get the hell out of here. And don't ever come back. That same year, she died Christmas morning. I'd say I regret how I acted if, you know, she genuinely cared about me. Do you not realize what you did? Her own daughter rejected her, all because she felt her mother was being selfish. You can only imagine the amount of pain she had suffered from that. Excuse me? She didn't give me the light of day until I finally made a business for myself. Do you seriously think it's just a coincidence she talks to me after I become successful? Oh my god, no, that's not... <sighs> you don't get anything. Whatever. I give up. Let present take care of you. Oh, uh... Scrooge and Marley's Cosmetics, what can I do for you? Uh, hello? Freaking bum, quit wasting my time. Elizabeth. Ah, God, you people need to quit doing that. You're going to give me a heart attack. You'll be fine. Well then, I presume you are the present? I am. 
Now please, grab my hand. I must show you something. Great. We're going down this mess again. I just wanted to say thank you to everyone for coming this evening. You all are really wonderful people, and Christmas is about spending time with family and friends. I have to admit, I was a bit bummed when my aunt refused my invitation. I feel bad because I know she's so lonely, but if she wants to come by and visit, by all means, we can have her here. Anyway, just relax and enjoy the wonderful food my amazing husband cooked for us. We will start playing our traditional game of charades in just a few moments. Honey, are you sure that you're okay? Yeah, I'm fine. I know how much you wanted your aunt to come tonight. I'm fine, really. She does this every year. It's frustrating, but you get used to it after a while. I know, it's hard. I'm sorry. It's not your fault. I never knew that's how she really felt. Mm. Okay. Everyone, let's get the game started. I'll go first. Hmm. Okay, I got it. You want money? Oh no, it's my money, money, money. I got it, Mr. Krabs. Close, but not quite. I am not coming to your Christmas party. Oh, I have it. It's your Aunt Scrooge. You got it. Well done. <laughs> What's wrong with money? Well... I don't care. They can think that all they won't. Won't make them as successful as me. You're not easy to convince. <sighs> Let's try this. Spirit, why have you brought me here? To Betty's house. Just watch. Kids, I'm home. Hi, Mom! Mom, you're back! Look what I got! My teacher gave me an old backpack from the Lost and Found! Well, that was very kind of her, Tessa. Mom? Are you okay? Yes, sweetie. I'm just a little lightheaded. Tessa, honey, run and go get my insulin from my purse. Here, Mom. This is the only one I could find. That means that's the last one I'll be able to get for a while. <clears throat> Thank you, girls. Now go set the table. Okay, okay mom. mom. I never knew Betty was sick. Will she be okay? Odds are, there will be an empty chair at that dinner table. An empty chair? What do you mean? Does something happen? That's up to you to decide. Now, keep watching. I would like to give a toast to my boss, Miss Elizabeth Scrooge, for allowing me to have the night to spend off with my family. I know it's not a lot this year, but I am so grateful. Say thanks, Miss Scrooge. Thanks, thanks Miss Scrooge. Scrooge! You see? People still care about you. You are so rude to them, but they still want to be with you and still toast you. Why can't you just be a little nicer to people? I understand, Spirit. I don't want to be alone. Wait. No. You were trying to trick me. Don't think for one minute I forgot about when my pest of a niece made fun of me with all of her little opinionated friends. Don't you see? That's what you do to people. They care for you, but they aren't going to be nice forever. Soon enough, you'll be by yourself. I'm afraid I can't help you any further. I see now, the only one left to convince you is him. Good luck. By myself. <laughs> I won't be by myself. I have my business and my money. That won't last long. I told you guys to stop scaring me like that. And why do you say I will be... I will be what? Look. How stupid of her to leave all her makeup here. I know, right? This would sell for hundreds. Wait, where am I? Where's Cratchit? Why are people looting my office? Time moves on without you. Whatever happened to all her money? Beats me. All I know is I don't have it. Come on, guys. I said you can have some of the stuff because you used to work here. But not while I'm still trying to keep this business afloat. All these bills. How am I supposed to pay this when she left me no money? I can't afford to keep this business alive. I'm sorry, Aunt Lizzie. I have failed you. My business? 
What's happening to my business? Why isn't Cratchit there to stop this? She couldn't go on. What happened to her? Where is she? She's gone. Tessa! Look what I found! Coloring books! Do you want to color with me? What's wrong? I miss Mom. I know, I know. I hate foster care. They don't love or care about us. Cratchit really was sick. Why didn't I see this sooner? Spirit, where am I? A graveyard? Why are you showing me this? Look closer. <gasps> I'm dead? How could this be? I don't want this. Spirit, I don't want to end like this. Everyone around you was pushed away. You took yourself out of everyone's life. No one was there to help you when you needed people the most. I don't want this. How can I fix this? It's set in stone. No, please. Take me with you. I'm sorry, Felicity, for not believing you. I'm sorry, Cratchit, for not seeing you were sick. I'm sorry, Marley, I should have listened when you said you didn't think the business was a good idea. I deserve to die, not you. I want to change. I wish I could fix all my mistakes, but I know I can't. I'm back! Hallelujah! I'm back! Wait, what day is it? 5.30 a.m. It's Christmas morning! I fell asleep at the office? Wait. Oh my god, Cratchit! it! Merry Chris- Miss Scrooge, what are you doing here? Where were you this morning? What are you talking about? I- I thought I had the day off. Yeah, you didn't show up to work. So I had to drive all the way down here to tell you that you're getting a raise. And I brought you some holiday food. Wait, hold on a second, Miss Scrooge. Call me Liz. Now, don't just stand there. Help me carry in the food. Really? Thank you so much. Well, you should stay and eat with us. You paid for all of this after all. Uh, no, I can't. Sorry. I have some family stuff to go take care of. Well, I'm happy to see you're changed in attitude. Oh, Elizabeth. I thought you weren't coming. Well, it seems I've had a bit of a change in heart this evening. That's wonderful. Why don't you come in? It must be freezing out there. Felicity will be excited to see you. I hope so. Hmm. Okay. You want money? Oh no, it's my money, money, money. I got it. Mr. Krabs. Close, but no. I am not coming to your Christmas party. Oh, Scrooge? You got it! Well done! No, Felicity. Scrooge is behind you. I deserve that. Aunt Elizabeth? <clears throat> I, um, have come to dinner. If you'll still have me. I can leave if you don't want me here. Oh no, of course we do. I just didn't think you wanted to come seeing that you turned down the invitation yesterday. But we would love to have you. Come join us. As you can see, my friend Elizabeth Scrooge had a change of heart for the better. She reconnected with her family, she kept her promise to stay a kind person till the day she died. And with the extra pay Scrooge has given to Cratchit, she could pay for her insulin to see her grandbabies grow up. Scrooge started making great products for people to buy and, to, and no longer cheated anyone out of their money, and she vowed to live in the past, present, and future. And to every living thing on this earth, Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year.
As I drew in my head and was turning around, down the chimney St. Nicholas came with a bound. He was dressed it all in fur from his head to his foot, and his clothes were all tarnished with ashes and soot. A bundle of toys he had flung on his back, and he looked like a peddler just opening his pack. His eyes, how they twinkled, his dimples, how merry. His cheeks were like roses, his nose like a cherry. His draw little mouth was drawn up like a bow, and the beard on his chin was as white as the snow. The stump of a pipe he held tight in his teeth, and the smoke it encircled his head like a wreath. He had a broad face and a little round belly that shook when he laughed like a bowl of full of jelly. He was chubby and plump, a right jolly old elf, and I laughed when I saw him in spite of myself.
his head, soon gave me to know I had nothing to dread. He spoke not a word, but went straight to his work, and filled all the stockings, then turned with a jerk. <laughs> Thank you. 
see what we need. Give us hope, my voice is calling. Can you see? Look in my eyes. Can you feel? My hand is reaching. Give us hope and we'll show you the way. Listen to the sound of my voice.
Kids jingle belling and everyone telling you be a good cheer. It's the most wonderful time of the year. There'll be parties for hosting, marshmallows for toasting, and caroling out in the snow. There'll be scary ghost stories and tales of the glories of Christmases long, long ago. It's the most wonderful time. It's the most wonderful time. It's the most wonderful time of the year. finger aside of his nose, and giving a nod up the chimney he rose. He sprang to his sleigh to his team gave a whistle, and away they all flew like the down of a thistle. But I heard him exclaim ere he drove out of sight, Happy Christmas to all, and to all a good night. <laughs>
Stay. Stay.